Good morning. Welcome to today's webinar. Today's session is um, going to be covering a lot of the detail that is outlined in Chapter 2 of the Design and 3D Modeling Course Guide, specifically in relation to centerline alignments. This goes along with the of course, the other chapters that we've been doing previously. And so uh, it'll be posted once it's been um, recorded, edited, uh, it'll be out there on the posted webinar site. Today's session, uh, just to give you an overview of what we're going to be doing, we're going to start out by importing the baseline chains for a project, uh, the baseline of survey chains for a project from a job file, just to show you how you can import from a GPK file. And then we're going to use civil geometry to design a proposed center line. But we're going to do it maintaining uh, design intent and applying uh, design standards and then um, looking at all the advantages of um, using the civil geometry tools to build your 2D geometry, starting with the center line. And then we'll look at some of the tracking or stationing uh, your center line and using the tracking tools with the uh, civil AccuDraw. Then I'll talk about the alignment file and putting your annotation, what we're calling stationing annotation, into this other alignment RD01 file, which is a little different than our current workflow, but I'll kind of talk about the, the reasons for that. And then um, we can import a couple of side roads as well. And then time permitting, I want to uh, talk about uh, something that was really covered in Chapter 3, but I want to readdress it specifically as it relates to transitioning uh, or when you're transitioning from a certain type of typical, say a four lane to a two lane and what to do in those cases with the geometry. Let's get started. I'll go back into an F.SS3 session and just to make this go a little quicker, in Chapter 2 we have you create your first design file for the project. And then from there, we have you go in and reference your right-of-way files from survey, your aerials, your topo file, and this is the property line file as well. And so I'm going to open up this view, and if I go to view 5 here, you see that this is the actual orientation of the project. It's, it's a skewed uh, intersection here as it exists, and... Um, what we're going to be doing in this session is designing actually a uh, more of a 90 degree intersection to the to the uh, state road here and uh, so uh, the aerials didn't pop in there but let's see uh, if I just detach it and reattach it they should show up so I'll just go ahead and attach another this aerials file here and choose OK and then uh, you can see the aerial. So, um, <clears throat> what we're what we're tasked uh, with doing in this project is essentially trying to find a location along this uh, baseline 98 in here that we would um, really realign to more of a 90 degree. And we've got to pay attention to this particular property in here, specifically this parking lot and driveway. And uh, so. That's really what our design objective is. Now, before we can uh, do any of the, the line work, what we want to first do is import uh, the baseline center lines from the um, GPK file. So if you go into the general geometry, there is the import geometry tool. And then you just select the job file. And you can open up other files, uh, Another, say it was a quarter modeling job in SS2 and you had the alignment files or an inroads file from somebody else, uh, you could select an ALG file. But for probably 99% of the jobs, it's going to be a GPK file. So then I'll just choose open. It'll bring up a dialog of everything that's in the GPK file. So you'll see a list of alignments and curves and points. And in this case, I just want to click on the uh, alignment um, box there. And I have two alignments out here the baseline of 98 and the existing 61 um, baselines. So then I'll just choose import and I've got now two new lines in this file. If I hover over them you can see they're in here and once I have them in the file I'm going to go ahead and 
set feature on them because they were just brought in at the default level and so they're, they are uh, essentially civil geometry as it exists in the file but it hasn't got a feature on it yet so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select from our feature definitions list here the baseline and then I'll just click on this line and it lets me click more than one line when I click on that line and you'll see those turn pink and then I'll reset and it basically makes them baselines and then I just use the escape key to uh, get out of the command so that I can go ahead and um, hover over the and see the the context tool show up there that shows me that it's actually a it's now a feature baseline uh, so that's as simple as it is if you've got stuff in your GPK file and you need to bring it in as civil geometry you can do that now one of the first things we're going to do, and, and uh, I'm going to sort of collapse this view five, is locate uh, some place along this baseline where we want to tie into it. And for this job, there's an existing school here, and it would be good to try to line up this new intersection with the main school intersection so that they could put a signal here and sort of control the uh, pedestrian as well as vehicle traffic around here. So. Um, in order to do this, I'm just going to build some some smart construction lines that I then will basically connect uh, in order to design a good center line that is rule based and will maintain the design intent that I'm trying to build here. So the first thing I know I'm going to want to do is have a perpendicular intersection here. So I'm going to go out to the horizontal geometry. I'm just going to select a a civil geometry line between points. And in order to get a relationship to this baseline here, I'm going to use the intersect tool. So I'm going to bring up the button bar here and actually not intersect. I'm going to do perpendicular to this baseline. And now you'll see that it's just sort of tracking me perpendicular along this baseline, just like a normal microstation perpendicular. But in this case, uh, I could give it a length. Let me see, 100 feet. 150 feet and then data point there and uh, I should have used the feature uh, construction line green so let me show you how you can um, use these features as you're drawing them I could do control Z and uh, I want to talk about the feature toggle bar just to show you uh, how it works with all the other tools that you draw now you whenever you place a line you can select the feature right from the tool uh, or if you select any of these tools over here you can select the feature right from this list and I could go to let's say uh, construction line blue here and then if I draw that same perpendicular line from here to there it draws that perp that blue uh, blue line that way or I'm just gonna control Z there and I'm gonna do it a little differently I'm gonna select it in this toggle bar I'm going to go ahead and set it as construction line green dashed over here and then I use this as the active line and then notice that as soon as I hit this button here use active feature definition it changed this this uh, place line tool to use active feature so now anything that I pick over here as long as this this is set to use active feature whatever I set in here is going to be what places in here so I'm I'm going to again do that same thing. I'm going to do a perpendicular line from the baseline and I'll set it to 150 feet and I'll just uh, sort of eyeball it right there. And if you look now I have this little green line here and I can turn off the aerial now that I've sort of located about where I want it. Um, I'm going to turn this off just so you can see it a little better. And now you see where that line is. Now, the next thing I know I'm going to want to do is I'm going to I'm going to essentially try to intersect a line over here. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is just create a, uh, a line from an element. So I'm going to use this tool line from element and then I just select the line that I want to basically extend from which will be this one and then I give it a begin point which is going to be really the intersection of where I started there and now I just give it a uh, a length in this case I'm going to use let's say minus 2,000 feet and it will place it out here 
and when I data point, now I've basically placed a construction line. The thing about these lines, if I turn off a couple more of these reference files now, is that they're still they're rule based. This line that I just built is 2,000 feet, and it's also ruled off of this line. So this line you see is 150 feet, but it also has a uh, it's got a if you can see that there's a perpendicular snap to the baseline here. So the design intent has been met. So then if I were to just move this line this way, because of the way it was built, that one goes with it. And so that's what uh, building by design intent means. I first wanted a, something that was perpendicular to my baseline at a location. It didn't, the specific location I could have set, but I left it, um, I left it floating on purpose. And then I built a line off of this perpendicular line such that it would uh, it'd be 2,000 feet. And I could change it here now if I wanted to, say minus 1,500 feet. And it would change it that way. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, um, uh, in order for this, uh, let me just talk about the design. In order for this design to uh, curve into here, we wanted to try to um, uh, mitigate the impacts on that one property owner. So we're going to deflect, we're going to come along our normal baseline, deflect over to this center line, and then essentially build a curve in there. So that's the objective of this. And, and I don't know what that, def I don't know what that offset needs to be, but I know that if I put in a one degree deflection, I don't necessarily have to have a curve at the beginning of my um, deflection. And then I'll just put in a, a main design curve for the design speed of this project. So uh, let me just start with a an offset of this entire baseline because I don't know where it's going to end up intersecting it. So I'm going to use a single offset entire element and it's going to continue using my green line dashed and then I'll just pick this element and then uh, it's set to a, a fixed distance but if I wanted to eyeball it I could turn on you know, I could turn on my uh, topo file and I could eyeball it somewhere over here in this field or in this case I can just set, I just key in the, the value 30 and when I hit the enter key it locks it into that offset of 30 feet. So I'll just use 30 feet for now and I'm not going to mirror that offset. So I'll turn off the topo file and you should see this extra green line over here. Alright, so then um, what I'm going to do next, I'll just kind of draw and show you because uh, sometimes it's hard to kind of follow what, what I'm doing. I'm just going to draw just a default. These are microstation lines just to illustrate something. And then if I use uh, a parallel, I can just move parallel on this line, make a copy of it, and set it to like, in this case, 30 feet. I'm just, this is for illustration. It's not part of the design. So if I draw that line in there, what I'm really going to do next is I have this line. Again, I just drew another line here. It goes from here to here. So this is the line that I just came from. I extended it. And what I want to do is essentially bisect these two lines where, this, where it's a one degree deflection. So think of it like I was essentially going to start here and uh, go to here. And so this is a one degree deflection on the normal center line. And so the, the angle, the opposite angle on the other side is also one degree. So what I'm going to do next is place a line, uh, a construction line that starts at the intersection of my offset line and my extended tangent line, come off of this bearing one degree until it intersects this line. Okay, so that's, that's the objective of what I want to build next. So I'm going to basically delete these lines and show you how to do that with... Um, with these tools. There's several ways that you could accomplish this, but all I'm going to do is select this line, go find the bearing of it, which is this north north 11.9389 degrees west, and I'm just going to copy that into my buffer. So I'll do control C. And then I'm going to use the place line tool over here. Not that one. Horizontal geometry, place line. And I'm going to start at the intersection of these two lines. And now I can set my bearing up here in the dialog, bearing and distance. So I wanted to go, let's say, uh, 2,000 feet, because I don't know really how far it's supposed to be. 
Let's see, 2,000. So, and then I'm going to set the the angle to be that same bearing, but it should be off a degree. So instead of 11, it's going to be 10. And it will sort of construct this line, and I just put a data point, and now I've drawn this extra line out here. And I open up this view 5 so you can see. I can zoom into this end of the line. And you see where that line, uh, well, there's the offset line, so i got to find this extra. Did I not accept that point? Okay, there it is. So there's that line, and you'll see where it actually crosses, and 2,000 feet is extended beyond it. So now what I can do is use some of the microstation modifies, and it will, it will hold the design intent of some of these intersects as well. So I'm going to come over here to the modify trim to element tool, and I'll select this green line, and I'll trim it to the baseline. Okay. Now I want to show you some of the things that get built. So now notice that the uh, there's a little ball with two arrows on the end of this line. That's where it was uh, 2,000 feet, but it's been trimmed back, and now you'll see there's this trim element block here. Okay, so just to show you how this design intent has been maintained, I'm going to place a circle, uh, just a, a basic microstation circle, that is at the intersection of those two lines and I'm setting the selection so let me get out of that so I'll place a circle at the intersection right here and I'm gonna make it about that big and you can see if I select this line again that it's actually right in the middle And if I zoom out here you'll see that that is uh, also right there in the middle of this circle okay so now what I'm gonna do is go change a couple things over here. So now if I modify this again, and if I move this line up and down the road so that it maybe lines up with a different intersection for some reason, or it, or if it's off of a, par a property line, as soon as I move that, you'll see that now this the end of this line has moved away from that where that circle was. So if I click on this, you'll see how the end of that, the, it still trimmed it. It still has where it was 2,000 feet but it's maintained all the geometry intent that I had built into it. Then the same thing if I were to change this offset right here, just change this from minus 30 to minus 50, it also is going to change where the end of this line ends up being. So now it's even, you know, it's even farther down the road than it was. It actually goes almost off the alignment. So that's what we mean by design intent, by adding or uh, building, building your elements with with the intent of the design that you're trying to build. And that way, you, if, if something has to change down the road, because everything's going to be built off of these. I mean, your corridor is going to get built off of it, all your radius returns, you know, any intersections, driveways, so that if one little thing changes, if the offset has to change or this, you know, this uh, location has to change, your whole corridor will redesign all the geometry uh, based on the way you originally placed it. Okay, so we still haven't put in the curve here yet, so what I'm going to do next is use the uh, design standards to try to figure out what the radius is for this, for this curve to meet standards. So I'm going to use the horizontal uh, simple arc tool, but before I do that, I want to open up the design standards toggle bar. So that's another toggle bar, and these can be docked if you like um, or not. I, I tend to lose them if they're docked, so I kind of keep them out and move them around as I need to. And what what the design standards are is we've, uh, or the, you know, Bentley provided a list of um, design standards that you could track against. And we've gone through our PPM and set them to Florida current uh, PPM standards. So all you have to do is know what type of facility it is. In this case, it's an arterial it's on flat terrain it's a it's going to be an urban type section with curb and gutter in this area and they'd like to design it to 50 miles per hour so that's the uh, basic criteria for this facility and then when I select a tool like this arc tool it automatically checks the minimum 
uh, radius that I would need to put in there. So I don't have to go look it up in the tables. And then all I do is select the first element, which is going to be this um, deflected element here, and select the second element. And it will place that radius in, um, in or that fillet in between there. And I'll go ahead and select that. And then I can trim to both. And now I have that curve built in there like that. And again, if I were to try to move something here, you see that it maintains the radius value associated with that. And the same thing goes for the angle. So for example, if I were to grab this and if I wanted to change the angle of this line just a little bit instead of 90, if I needed to go off just a little bit, you see that as I move it like that, it still holds all of the, the, the intent that I had built into this. If I can say intent a hundred times in this webinar, I'll be doing good. So um, that's just kind of showing how it all holds together. Now, now that I have all my constructed elements, uh, I want to go ahead and create a intelligent center line out of it. So what I'll do next is use the tool Complex by Elements, and I'll select uh, the type of feature I'm going to build here is a centerline feature and I'm going to locate the first element which is the first one I placed here and if I have it set to automatic it will go all the way through there for me and you'll see it's selected all the way to the end of that uh, circle there and then I'm going to go ahead and accept it and now I have an intelligent centerline out there that I can um, use for my corridor or for my design and of course it's two design standards now the other thing about this is uh, if you've already drawn something and you want to check it against a design standard you can use this other tool right here which is to um, uh, well actually this is the one that sets it and then you can basically set an alignment and then this one allows you to design by that uh, standard as well so you can use these two to uh, sort of figure out what you've got now if for some reason um, Let's say I turn toggle that one off, and uh, this curve gets changed from 800 to let's say 600. And if you zoom into this, it should. Uh, if this is set to 50 on this particular, you'll notice that there's this little uh, warning um, icon that shows up, and that you can look at in the Civil Message Center if you turn off these microstation errors. You can look at all your errors in here, and what that's going to say is that the arc radius is less than minimum. So, because I changed it to 600 and it's supposed to be a minimum 881, it's automatically checking that for me. And Control Z works for any of these. So, if I Control Z twice, I take off the set design standard and then also uh, set it back to my radius. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is station this. So right now, its its start station is zero at the beginning of where it is here at this school, but I, I want to use something um, a, a little different. So I'm going to set the start station on this center line, and I'm going to locate it at the intersection of the baseline of the existing road and my new um, center line, and then I'm going to set the value to, in this case, 700. So now, if I click on this line, it tells me right here that the start of this is at 700. If you wanted to change it, all of these now you can edit just by clicking on them and using the heads up, uh, the heads up tools to change those values. Well, this is really good because now if I want to use Civil uh, AccuDraw, I can just open up the Civil AccuDraw tool. I pull it off of this uh, this little shortcuts menu. It's a civil AccuDraw here. You can also get it off of the general geometry and do it here. And then there is a civil AccuDraw setting for station offset. So if I set this to station offset, now any anything if I want to like draw anything, for example, if I want to start a microstation line and use civil AccuDraw, if I place a uh, a point here, see how it's going to it's going to try to track a station. So all I have to do is set the, the object that I'm tracking off of to this baseline. And I'll, all, all I essentially did is hit the O key in the field and then 
Uh, the first time you do it, you can do it from the station field. Any time after that, you have to actually go to the offset field. So if I hit O, if I wanted to track off this baseline, now I'm tracking off of the existing 61 baseline. If I want to track off the proposed baseline, I just tab to the offset field, key in the O for offset, and select this reference line, and now I'm tracking off of that. So I can draw lines with MicroStation. I could go place a cell. I could go to our cell apps, go to the f.cell web pages, and I could pick an existing drainage utility. And now I could place that drainage utility at a station offset from this proposed center line. So um, all those placement tools are available using just a simple civil AccuDraw. And then when you don't want to use civil AccuDraw, you just click on this and turn it off and then reset and you're no longer doing it. Now as far as annotating this, um, because the annotation for um, SS3 is done through the DDB, which is no different than the way we currently do it, what we're recommending is that you go back into the alignment RD01 file and actually place the stationing and then reference it to your design. The only drawback to that is um, you would have to replace it every time something in the design changed. But usually once you got your center line set, you know, it doesn't change that much. Once it's been designed, then you just kind of station it and go with it from there. So um, just for the sake of doing it, I'll go over to this alignment file. And now when you create uh, your alignment file, did it actually open it? It's going to create all of the models for all the different scales. Um, that you possibly might have. So uh, in the create file app, when you create a new alignment RD file, it's going to create all of these model files for each of the different scales that you would want to show your stationing. So then all I'm going to do is come over to this. I'll go into the, uh, let me turn off some of these toolbars here. I'm going to go to Geopack Road. DNC manager and then I'm going to draw a planner profile from the job file and uh, the only thing is I forgot to do was to save that uh, to a GPK file so let me just switch back to there. The nice thing is is that uh, all my design work is still in here. I didn't switch back to far enough so let me switch back to the design file again. And then what I'm going to do is select this um, center line and save it to the GPK file. So instead of using import geometry, I'm going to use export to native. The other thing, uh, but before I do that, one thing I want to always check, let me get rid of these, is I want to look at the, um, the feature name and also the name of the alignment that I created. When I did that complex chain, um, I wasn't paying attention to the uh, feature name. So it, it just puts in whatever the default name is. That's okay. All you have to remember is to go into it before you export it and set the name of it to whatever you want it to be stored as in the GPK file. So in this case I want it to be called State Road 61 Underbar Webinar for now and it's going to use that feature definition. I could have done it that way. You can also do it from the Project Explorer. If you go uh, and go into the civil model, this is going to have everything I've placed in the design file so far. So if you look at the linear elements, I've got a whole bunch of construction lines out here. I've got my baseline, 61, 98. Um, and now you see I have this complex element, SR16 web webinar, and it's based on a bunch of other elements. So I can uh, just click on here, go to Properties, and it will bring up your Element Info dialog. And you could change it here as well. You can go to this feature, and I could change it to Webinar um, December. And then uh, it won't update in this view yet. Even if you make changes to it here, it, unless you actually close out of it and then go back into the um, Project Explorer, this is one thing I've noticed. Now you'll see it has Webinar December has been renamed here. It won't update, unfortunately, uh, right after you've done something in the Element Info dialog. 
Either way, that's how you can change change the names. Lots of different ways of doing it. So then I'm going to do the export. I'm going to select this element and reset, and it'll pick the job file that I want to export it to. So I'm going to select that job file, and it will tell me that that uh, has been. It says uh, well, actually, it says invalid name. That that name is too long. So uh, I've got to rename it. like that and then export again select this line reset and place that in the in the job file and then just to verify I can go over to the um, coordinate geometry for this job file and if I go to the uh, element uh, chain utility you'll see now I have that SR61 web and so that's out there uh, for me to use and then I'm going to just switch into the this uh, alignment RD01 with the alignment RD under bar 50 model open that file up go into DNC manager design and computation manager go to the plan and profile select the job and then I want to go ahead and do the stationing at a 50 scale for SR61 web and if I fit now I have that stationing out here and you'll see that uh, where the actual start station is set here to 700 such that I could go back to the design file now close out of the DNC manager and then just reference that file in here so I'll attach the alignment file be careful to pick the 50 scale model choose OK and close this dialog and now you see I've got the stationing in there now like I said if you were to make a modification in the design file to the actual alignment the you would have to update the annotation as well so it's um it's a little uh, extra work for doing the stationing. Um, notice I didn't I didn't place the actual chain in the alignment file. There's no point in it since it's in the active file. Um, the thing about having it in the active file is that if you did want to make some little change, it's in the active file, and everything that you build is now going to be in the active file as far as your corridor and your 2D geometry and all that. So that's why you would have the baseline or the the center line in this active file. So uh, let's see, we're, we're doing pretty good on time. I want to see if there's any questions here that uh, need any addressing. When you say import GPK file, when you, that's a good question. When you do imports from a job file, what you're doing is you're disassociating, in a way, you're disassociating what's in the GPK into the design file, such that they're now intelligent elements. And if you make a modification in the design file to an element, it doesn't update the GPK file. Okay, so um, I use these because they should be fixed center lines that either survey or we got from some other source. Um, and since I had a fixed source, these do not change. But everything that I'm building, you know, is going to be based off of the two fixed uh, baselines. So essentially all my design now is in this file and then if I want to store it to the GPK file I can do the export utility and store it back but all of the things that I all the coordinate geometry that I generated if I want to create reports on this it's all in this active file as a matter of fact that's one thing I can do if I click on this alignment I can bring up the horizontal geometry report and it will there's lots of this is kind of like the describe tool in the old Kogo tools um, but there's several different reports out here that you can click on as a matter of fact there's an alignment to XML right here so that if you wanted to save these to an XML file and give this center line to your surveyors or to someone to go out and stake it in the field or for the contract or what have you you have this um, export to land XML utility there Okay, where are the uh, features obtained from? 
There is a uh, DGN Live, which is a very good question. If you look at a, a under the Project Explorer, you're going to see all of the DGN Lives that are being used for features. So you'll see that there's one for Civil Features RD, Civil Features UT, Suda Features, and so this is utilities. This is the uh, storm. Uh, I'm sorry, surface. Um, the underwater, under underground surface utilities is what that is for, uh, but all of the civil features that we're using for civil geometry are in this roadway, and then any of the plan 2D features that we've created here are in this list, and so you're allowed, able to pick any of these for drawing the 2D line work. Notice you have the center lines. Now I think in the first release we had a center line with stationing uh, feature. I'd recommend that you don't use that. Uh, it probably shouldn't have been included. That is the one feature that we created that would automatically export to the GPK. Um, but we've disassociated the import export with the GPK just because people were overriding things in their GPK. So we, we tried to make it more of a conscious thing rather than an automatic thing. So there's no longer a center line with stationing in our feature table. Uh, so if you have one out there in yours, don't use it. <laughs> or if you use it, be careful because you might overwrite something in your GPK file. Um, so that's where the features are actually stored in our DGN Live with our workspace. If for some reason I'm missing a feature folder in a design, say 2D plans, how could I link it to the DGN? If you're in our workspace, it's automatically going to get attached. The only time it wouldn't is if you go into the menu configuration and currently, the feature, the feature DGN lives uh, are associated with the checkbox that you have here. So there's going to be a traffic plans DGN live. There's a, uh, I don't remember if there's a separate traffic control from, I think there is. There's one for utility survey. There's, if I take this one off and check this one on and say check this one on, when I reconfigure the workspace now, I'm going to go show you the DGN lives that are are now attached to it. So we've got variables in the, in our workspace that look for those checkboxes and then based on the checkbox we open up different feature libraries that you can draw from. As soon as this thing opens back up I'll show you the Project Explorer and now what feature libraries have been attached. Okay so first of all you'll see that I've got a couple extra menus here. I've got the traffic menus and then if I hit F11 uh, go to civil standards, open up the features, I'm sorry, go to the libraries. This is what's in the active file. This is only going to be what's drawn in this file. So I've got, those are the ones that get drawn in this file. This is everything that gets attached so that you can draw from them. So now you see I've got roadway features, I've got traffic plan features, suited features, and also survey features out here. The only, the only thing about this is that now when you go to place something, let's say I place a line and or I go to this feature toggle bar, it's easier to see here because this, this menu is not stretchy, but this menu is, or resizable is I guess the correct technical term for it. So if you click uh, pull down this list here, now you're going to see I've not only got, I've also got traffic plan features that I can draw from, I've got 2D uh, roadway features, and um, and so on and so forth. So that's the difference between the feature DGN lives. Where in in the like in the legacy tools, when you open up the DDB to draw from it, everything is in that list, and you'd have to go through all those folders to find the one that you were looking for. We've um, filtered it now by the um, menu configuration that you've set for your design, so that you can. Um, have a shorter list to have to look through, I guess. There's some other advantages to doing that as well. Is there a naming convention for con for alignments? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, it will. Uh, you can name them kind of almost anything that you want. The one caveat to that is just like I had to make sure it was um, GPK file compliant. There is a um, a character limit, and as far as the uh, type of characters that you can put in a GPK chain name so if you know you're going to be exporting these and center lines obviously you would maybe edge of pavements and things like that you 
don't necessarily have to you know export them or maybe you do or it all depends if, if you're going to export it to the GPK you have to be careful what you name it that's the main thing it says if you have a radius that's below minimum can you use the feature to change it uh, it doesn't automatically change it but you can obviously go in and adjust it just like I did and you saw that the uh, the little icon changed most of these answered are, are being answered by uh, some of the other personnel in here individually but I don't know if everybody can see all the questions so I think it's useful to read them can a drainage structure be placed and associated with a construction line so that if the construction line is modified the structure moves yeah I believe you can do that I would have to sort of get in and mess with it um, uh, there are some you would kind of have to do it off of some construction lines or something like that uh, because what I have noticed is that if you try to place something with a um, civil AccuDraw offset it doesn't necessarily honor the civil AccuDraw offsets uh, according to an alignment not always um, I would have to go in and test it to make sure I'm sure there's probably a way that, that you can do that okay so um, I think that answers a lot of these questions for the center line I wanted to sort of uh, recover something that I covered in chapter 3 and that is placing uh, these typical section um, civil cells so I think in the last session I just grabbed this uh, this one um, and I don't remember if that was the one I think it was actually this one down here this typical five and I placed it on the center line and um, whenever you place the um, these typical section civil cells they work off the entire element that you use as a reference okay so see this little red center line in here so the whole point like if you had a transitioning roadway uh, along your center line like where it was going to go from four lane divided to its normal two lane divided in this way you have to have some transitioning segment in here okay so the best way to do that is to build a little horizontal offset with this single offset partial tool it's kind of like copy parallel at a zero offset for a station range is really what you're doing so you click this uh, single offset partial and then you can select a construction line I use construction line green dash and then you locate the element that you want to copy you tell it that the uh, you fix your offset to be zero feet by just clicking in that field hitting zero and then uh, there and then you can give it a, a start range and you can snap to things or use your intersect uh, tools here so I can say start it at the beginning here and now if I you'll see it's tracking if I turn off this uh, centerline DP you'll see that um, uh, this length is set to 200 you'll notice that it's actually tracking along that little green line is tracking right through my stationing which is in the reference so if I know that I've got a have a divided roadway what I would do is just come up to a certain location let's say it's 71650 so if I go to 71650 I can enter that value and now my green line stops right there and then I could put in a um, I could put in maybe I'm I need to have it transition for 300 feet so I could do the same thing and I could pick the center line turn it back on just so you can see it pick this center line and then I'll turn it off or I could put it at a small offset and then change the offset if I wanted to uh, so I could pick snap to there and then give it a length of let's say uh, instead of fixing it to the end here I could actually fix the length and say I needed this transition for 400 feet and it would draw the line in there and I could get to the end of this one and I could again uh, just for the sake of it turn that back on select this line turn this off and then um, pick from here and it's trying to put in that length again and then I could just go if I hit the alt key it'll go to the very end of my um, alignment and click that there so now I've got 
three construction segments that I can use for placing um, civil cells if I want to. So that's what I'll do. I'll go over here to civil cells and I'll select the um, civil cell for that four lane, this typical five, choose OK. And I'll click on this construction line and it will draw my parallel line work out there. And then I reset. Oh, you've got to follow your prompts here. And I want to turn off this AccuDraw. So I'm going to reset for alternatives and accept the civil cells. And so now it went up to 17, 1650. And then I'm going to pick a different one, which would be the two lane typical like this. And I'll just place that on the last segment, which is right here. And that has the shoulders, reset and accept. And then I'll, uh, what I would have to do here is I would have to build the transitioning roadways. So then I would have to come in. This is what this little feature toggle bar is not, is is useful for, is that I could just um, well actually what I could do is just do the same thing. I could locate this reference center line now that I thought about it. Um, and I probably picked the wrong one, didn't I? I think I did. Let me control Z on that one and pick this. Uh, Okay, actually, let me get here. Okay, I want to pick this element. I'm placing this 2D lines here. Reset, accept. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Reset and accept. And then all I'd have to do is come out to the uh, this baseline right here and make sure I'm transitioning this. Uh, whoops, we got to get out of the command. All right. If I click on here, this has an offset of minus 12. This has an offset of minus 29 to add because now we've accommodated it for the new seven foot bike line. So I can put minus 29 here. And then it should be minus 39 or minus 40 actually because it the 11 foot median. And uh, enter. And now I've basically transitioned this this way and do the same thing here. And because I transitioned from one end, it you know it held the other side. Anytime you place these civil cells, they have three uh, dimension handles that you can grab. Grab the one at the beginning, the one in the middle, or the one at the end. Obviously, just like you saw, it would. Um, just change one side if you draw, pick the ends. If you pick the middle one, it will change both sides. So anytime you want to change, like if you wanted to change the shoulder width from minus five, you would to minus six the entire length. You would want to change it from the middle, not from one of the ends. And then of course I'd have to go in here, and in this case I've got a sidewalk going into a shoulder. So if I wanted to delete this. Delete the sidewalk from an intersection on. I could just put in a line and sort of build it that way. So that's one way to draw on the transitioning things. Another way would be if you had independent PGL PGL grade lines that you built off of a uh, so center line with with some of these civil geometry tools, but it had curves in it. It wasn't a straight transition. And then you wanted to uh, essentially have your divided roadway follow those uh, independent uh, profile grade lines and draw that in the 2D. It would be really easy just to create a new civil cell by just, um, um, you know, just going out here and drawing a line. And it doesn't have to be anything. It can just be a center line like that. And then I could place a civil cell. And I could place the divided civil cell and then select this line like this and then re uh, do it again, follow my prompts and accept it. And then if I want to build just a half of it because I need to follow along a specific PGL line, what I could do is just um, um, drop the civil cell, select it here. And now it's it's dropped, and then I could uh, basically highlight all this 
and delete it. And then I could build a new civil cell, select this line, I could call it whatever, Vern's special template, like that, and locate this reference, and it would build a new civil cell, and then I could reset, and then um, reset to complete and accept the civil cell. Now, if if you notice that this is built 11 feet off of that center line, so all I'd have to do is come in here and set this to zero, and now I've essentially placed my PGL line of my inside edge of pavement right at the reference line. So now if I had a varying reference line out here, whatever it was, it would draw that half side of the roadway off of that one reference. So if I used, uh, let's say I go out here and I create, uh, just for demonstration, I'll do a complex by VPI and set a radius value of 100, 500 feet just to demonstrate this. I'm just going to click PIs now and then go this way. Um, let me give it a little tangent, build this like this. And uh, that wasn't very good, but if I wanted to now place this civil cell on this line, all I'd have to do is go to Civil Cells, Place, and I can select the one in my reference file, and then I just pick the, uh, actually I have to, again, let me follow my prompts. It wants me to locate, so I want to go to this Active Design file and pick this as my, uh, as my uh, Civil Cell, and then I'll pick the center line. And now you see I can place it there and reset and accept it. And now I've just got half the roadway off of that new center line. So if I had a separate one going the opposite way, um, notice when I place that, that I have the option to change the reference. So if, again, if I locate this reference element, and it's supposed to be on the opposite side, if I just click on this line, you see how it's changing the uh, orientation of, of what I just placed there. So if you had another line going the other way in the same direction, you would just use this little um, direction arrow which is an alternate to the original way that you placed it. And that's as simple as it would be. Where can you change the color of the handle? Mine is blue. It's harder to see than yours yellow. Okay. So that is under the workspace preferences. If you go to the civil options, you'll see that I've changed my normal color. Instead of blue, I changed it to yellow. The manipulator size and the uh, manipulator font I've changed. So. Um, that makes it really easy. So anytime you pick on something, it's a lot easier to see. Let me see if there's anything else. How do you produce a station offset report to structures from the proposed alignment? We've been um, working, talking with Bentley about this a little bit. Right now, there is a, a report under here called, um, actually, I guess it's under, actually, it's alignment reporting. I knew it was in here somewhere. There are several reports. There's a station offset report right here. And the way this works is you locate, uh, like, say, an element. Let's say I pick this element. And then you locate, uh, let's say, this line right here. And when you reset, it will generate a report of the two lines on the second element, and it will give you the station and offset values there. You can pick these different station offset formats here. So there's several. Uh, style sheets created from that report tool that you can use. Uh, it doesn't necessarily work off of points right now, but it will, you know, like if you had uh, placed some points out here, like uh, let me just place some active points here and let's say they me meant something. You couldn't necessarily get a station offset report on just these, but you could very easily use this tool and kind of draw a point, you know, lines between them and uh, control Z. Uh, make sure you're using the chain tool, which is this chain command, so that when you place this line, and as I snap to it, like that, then I could get a station offset report, which is this one right here, and I could locate the element uh, looks like it's only wanting to do one of them. And then pick the, I did it wrong. Let me try that again. So I picked the alignment and then I picked the element. Offset this one and then this one. 
and if I reset, I get that station offset report of those points that way. Um, it just you have to do this extra step of placing a little line in between them. So hopefully that helps. But and then any of these construction lines, if you hit your F uh, seven key, notice all these green lines that I had out here. Well, you don't see them now, but that's a construction class element. You just hit your F seven key. And all of the, the features that we placed out here and here, let's see, all of these 2D features that are, uh, they say, construction line blues, blue dash, all these, these are all um, construction class elements. So you can use your F7 key to turn them on and off, but you can also, that was one question one person said, is they're all on the same level. How do I turn off, let's say, uh, let's say I drew one out here that was blue. And so I picked a different feature here, uh, blue, and I drew it over here. And then I had a blue dash and a green solid. Well, if you look at the level, they're all on the same level, construction lines. However, they're separate features. So you can go over to your Project Explorer, go to the model, I'm sorry, go to the civil standards, and anything that you've placed feature-wise is listed in here. So all you have to do to turn on and off things is to go to this feature list, and I've got uh, blue lines, blue dash, green dash. I've got them all in here. All I have to do is uh, uncheck, let's say, the blue blue dash, and now I've turned that one off. If I want to turn off my sidewalk lines, obviously, I can just uncheck these, and they all turn off in this file. So you can turn off by level, or you can turn off by feature, and these are going to become real powerful in SS3 because as you place corridor objects, they're all going to be in corridor object folders. Uh, in this case, we've got everything separated from plan elements, which is why you see the way our feature folders were built, so that you could come in here and, and control what is being displayed based on the feature definitions, not necessarily level filters or levels. You don't even have to worry about these if you don't want to. Anyhow, I think that um, hopefully covered, well, it covers what I plan to cover in this session. If there's any other questions, let's see, that you, uh, you have, feel free to give us a call, send us an e email. Other than that, I think we're uh, done for today's webinar, so thank you all for attending. Hope to see you next time.